Welcome garden friends. Thanks for taking a little bit of time away from your garden to come visit mine. I really appreciate it. I know how busy you are because I know how busy I am. Today's show is all about one of my favorite things, bargains, bargains, bargains. Spend some time at the nursery poking around looking for deals. When you go to shop for plants, it's not like going to the grocery store. You should take your time, enjoy it, and again, look in the corners for all these TLC plants that need a little help or plants they can't move. That's the way to do it. And like I always say, I don't know if it's better just getting the plant or getting the bargain or both. I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, fellow garden cheapskates, I'm gonna give you some of my summer secrets for saving money. Everything's going on sale for the summer. We're getting a double bang for our buck for something like this. And I like to buy things that have a tender bulb underneath. That way I'm buying them late in the season. I'm enjoying them all the way until frost. Then I'm saving that bulb at the end of the season and I'm going to store that over the winter, which we'll talk about later in the season. And then I will replant next year. That's, that's the way to save money. And this big thing, half price, and we're just gonna take it out of there. Look at those roots. That looks good and fit right in here. This is our thriller. Usually I say thriller, then filler, then spiller. I don't have enough room for a filler. So around our thriller, I found another cool spiller on sale. This is an ivy called, what was it called? Tropical Blizzard, I think. Tropical Blizzard and it softens the edges. I need a little dirt though. Well, no, that'll work. Put one or two more in. And add a little dirt. And that's all there is to it. Like I said, when we get to the end of the season, oh, don't you love these caladiums? That is so beautiful. Shade loving, grown for its foliage, and I'm sure at some point the deer will get back in here and we'll eat it down to the nubs as, as it will with the ivy too. Something that's supposed to be deer resistant. All right, I got a couple more bargain plants I want to show you. Add some more dirt though. There we go. I think that thing looks cool. water on it and we'll be done. Check this out, 99 cents for these dill plants. There's got to be at least 10 in there. This is a fern leaf dill and yeah it looks a little tired in this plant because it's been at the nursery since April but I know once I get it in the garden give it some water give it some fertilizer it's going to go crazy and dill is the number one plant to bring in the good bugs. I'm going to split these up find some spots for them in the garden like I said give them water and fertilizer and once you have that dill You'll always have it because it throws seeds everywhere, and that's a good thing. I don't know what's better, getting the bargain or getting the plants. I think the bargain, maybe both. There's still time to sneak in some peppers. This is a hot pepper called habanero. I love hot peppers, but look at how good these plants looked. You know, all the vegetables were on sale at the nursery, and these were the best looking ones. I love habanero. I killed a pepper here. <laughs> in this uh, straw bale garden. So I'm just going to stick another one in here to replace it. And I've got a couple other places that I can plant these too. And I can't wait for our annual hot pepper tasting. <laughs> Maybe we'll do a video on that. On the bright side, when the deer were dragging my tomato cages around the garden, they did not negatively affect this beautiful lily. This is called Regal and it's from a place called Old House Gardens was introduced in 1905 and oh, I'm telling you, the whole garden, especially as we get later in the day, was just filled with this fragrance. Even though these flowers don't get the sun they need, they still bloom really nicely every year. That's what I love about this variety. And this is just the first one. I can't wait to show you the rest of my lilies, assuming the deer don't get them. I've got a great way for you to save some money on lilies. Lilies are easy to sell at the nursery when they look like that with those beautiful flowers. But when those flowers drop off, this is what you're left with. And then the nursery puts it on sale. That's when Mr. Cheapskate swoops in and you can buy these plants for sometimes two bucks. And 
Now you're gonna have to have some patience. You're gonna have to wait till next year at this time for them to bloom, but that's what this whole garden is filled with is bargain lilies like this. You can also find the bulbs at half price right now too when we get into the summer. So great way to add some beautiful color to the garden and do it cheaply. Now it's time for Talking Trees from the Davy Tree Expert Company. I'm joined by Luke Warner. He's the district manager for the North Pittsburgh office of the Davy Tree Expert Company. Today we're talking all about pests, but I feel like we're at the actor's studio or something. It does kind of feel like that. <laughs> what kind of tree would you be if you were a tree? <laughs> ah, hopefully an oak, right? <laughs> First thing on my mind is spotted lanternfly. I found one on the property, which I assume that means I have lots of them. And it's a invasive pest that hasn't been around that long, right? No, it hasn't. So, um, you know, back to finding one, and there's probably many, more than likely that is the case, unfortunately. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the infestation started along the East Coast. So, you know, a lot of imports coming, like how we get most of our invasive right. species. Um, so Pennsylvania, Maryland, New Jersey, you know, all those are, are where it's kind of been discovered. Um, it really follows, you know, railways and uh, river travel. That Just type hitchhiking of thing. away uh, along the, you know, in a crate or something, mm -hmm. shipping crate. Yep. And it also follows uh, those paths a lot because that's where its favorite host is, which is Alanthus or Tree of Heaven. Um, so those trees can really grow anywhere. and Which we don't care about, right? No. No, that's it's like a, a weed tree, right? Very much invasive species. But I know yeah. from what I've read, the spotted lanternfly attacks lots of other things, right? Yeah, I believe it's uh, somewhere right around 70 different yeah. species. Yeah. Um, Grapes and, and fruit trees and stuff like that, right? That's, everything that's... for beer and wine. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> not my hops. No. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's the scary part. It's, you know, it's grapes, it's hops, it's apples, peaches, even some hardwoods. Uh, we saw them on uh, maple trees. Uh, so they can be very, uh, very invasive and very, you know, destructive on that standpoint. So first thing is for people to know what it looks like, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if you see one, kill it, right? Certainly. But the way I've seen the pictures, and I haven't seen it in person like this, but hundreds or maybe thousands of them on a tree and then they just kind of jump off and jump back on or something, right? Yeah, so I saw uh, the largest population I saw was along a, along a railway along the Ohio River. Um, we were doing some treatments down there, but kind of went to see if it was needed. We went into the stand and it was all Alanthus and, you know, it's like your eyes have to adjust to see them, quite frankly, because there were so many. Um, you know, first you're like, where are they at? And then you, it's, your eyes adjust and they just covered everything. You could have shake a little tree and it's just thousands and hundreds of thousands of them all everywhere. And what are they doing when they're on that tree? Well, they're feeding, they're breeding, um, and you'll see, you know, a lot of the adults is the, are the ones that really can blend into that bark when their wings are, you know, enclosed. Now, when their wings open up, they're very colorful. They're all that color, right? Yeah, very, very identifiable. And what can we do about it? Uh, so the biggest thing is uh, monitoring, and because treatments are, you know, available but it's very hard to you know find all of them and it's going to be a very hard insect to eradicate um, but notifying the the proper individuals the proper authorities when you do find them there are quarantine zones set up um, so you're not you know moving wood making sure you're not uh, moving vehicles and if i end up with a tree that i love that has those all over them what can be done? There is some kind of treatment that can be done? To yeah, there's okay. foliar applications we can do. Uh, there's also systemic, more preventative applications that are, are working very well. As always with these explosions of invasive pests, we always hope that Mother Nature catches up, you know, figures out that it's a pest that can be eaten. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Crossing fingers. Yeah, I don't know that they have that right now or there's Not yet, else. but you know, just like stink bugs, when stink bugs exploded or gypsy moth exploded, mm -hmm. you know, we did see mother nature kind of put things back in balance. Yeah, yeah, hopefully you get some natural predators that do, you know, take advantage of the situation. I'm glass half full. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so what else uh, should we be looking for this time of the year? Uh, this time of year we're starting to see some of the borers become active. Um, you know, particularly around here you have a lot of rhododendrons and dogwoods. We both have, you know, rhododendron borers and dogwood borers. Um, How do I know if I have them? Well, there's a couple indicative things with borers. One is you'll actually see the, uh, you know, the holes in the, in the stem or in the trunk. Um, you'll see those and also if it's had it for a year or two, you oftentimes see some tip back, tip die back. Um, and that's just where, you know, the ends of those limbs are kind of, you know, dying there at the ends. 
and that's just because those borers are feeding in that living tissue of the plant. They're intercepting the nutrient flow. Ends of the branches are farthest away from the roots, so oftentimes they're gonna you know, die from the top down like that. That would be a good thing to have a certified arborist come out and take a look at to identify something like that, right? Most definitely, because that tip dieback, you know, you can't see it with a couple other things, but uh, to know you have a borer, take the appropriate actions to get on a treatment plan for and it. What else have you seen? What are, tell me about hem, hemlock woolly adult at this type, time of the year, because that's, that's become a problem, especially for somebody that has a bunch of hemlocks. Yeah, that's so frustrating with the state tree, yeah. but um, we are seeing it, you know, very frequently. It oftentimes is, is first noticed on those most shaded branches, the lower branches, which is nice because that's where that's where I can get to them. All of us, yeah, yeah, because I don't want to have to have you climb up to the top and spray them. Yeah, well, it's easily identifiable too, which is nice. Yeah, you explain know. what it looks like. So if you, uh, it, it's, it feeds on the underside of the of the stems. So you take, you know, your lower hemlock branches, flip them over, um, and you'll see. You know, it almost looks like white cottony or little pieces of cotton balls along those stems. And that's the adelgid or that insect. It's uh, actually has a piercing sucking mouth part. A couple of things that have worked here is first off, we have a really super cold spell in the winter that helps. And then for me, horticultural oil, just covering them with horticultural oil where I can reach them. Mm -hmm. My concern is if they get where I can't reach them, if it, if it starts to just infest the tree, then I'm going to have to invest in Davy tree. <laughs> yeah, there are some systemic options for larger trees, but um, the nice thing is that they are fairly easy to control, fairly easy to kill. So your horticultural oil will work just fine. Um, the insects are, are active uh, nearly throughout the whole year. So doing them in the, you know, those applications late winter, or early spring are, are very effective. And what else should we talk about? Um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, we're starting to see maybe some lace bugs coming out mm -hmm. and they feed on just about everything, it seems like. What is their number one thing? What is the number one thing that they like? Is it azaleas? Well, we or, see yeah. them a lot on azaleas. Yeah. If it gets real heavy, you know, the, the rhododendrons will get hit as well. And what do we do about lace bugs? Treatments, again. Um, and again, they're a soft-bodied insect, so they're not hard to control either. Um, but they do feed on the underside of the leaf. So oftentimes you'll notice uh, people have been treating them, but they're just spraying, you know, topically from the top. And um, you know those lace bugs are underneath the leaf, upside down. So you need to either kind of lift up parts of the plant, treat it, or spray upwards from under underside. How would you characterize the season this year as far as pests? Anything worse or better than? But I guess it's just up and down. Right? Yeah, it seemed to be uh, you know starting off a little bit slow this year. We usually have seen bagworms, you know, much uh, earlier. Let's talk about bagworms because when those things come out. You get lots of calls about that, right? Uh, usually we get lots of calls once they're adults. Yeah. Because they're, you know, small cocoons look a lot like a cone. And people don't recognize that as, as a pest. They think it's just, uh, you know, a part of the tree because they make those bags out of what they're eating. And it can look like just <laughs> another part of the tree. And th for that one, you just cut it off, right? Is that right? Yeah, you can just, you know, pick them off and dispose of them that way. How big do they get eventually? Uh, they can get, you know, inch and a half or so. It looks kind of like a pine cone. It looks almost identical to a pine cone. Unless it's on a maple tree, then it looks like a little clump of maple weeds. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, as always, thank you. Yeah, it's Appreciate been a pleasure. It. You're an oak. What kind of tree am I? I guess crab apple. Oh, <laughs> showy. <laughs> Crabby. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and old. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks again. No, not a problem. Oh, saving money is so much fun. It sure is for me. I hope it is for you. Let me know in the comments section what kind of bargains you found this year or in the past. And I'd also like to know, have you seen a spotted lanternfly? And if you've got any problems with pests, put that in the comments section too. We'll try and help you out. Until next week, keep planting and we'll see you then.